Asylum Artist Studio in Toronto, getting some pickup shots for our contact exhibit. About three months ago, Corey Vanderplu, our permanent Andre, approached me about collaborating on this project where we would mix photography and interactive elements to create a piece that would inject the audience into the work and make them feel as if they were really part of the motion, part of the interactivity of the work itself. After a month of pre-pro and research, we entered into production. We decided that based on how ambitious each piece of our project was, that we needed to pare it down and actually just do two pieces. The first piece would involve 15 Canon 5D Mark IIs assembled in a semicircle around our subject. We would capture each image of a moment in time and then in post put those together to create what is known as the bullet time or time slice effect. After we had done this, then we would bring it into post sync it with a CG composited background and use Flash and ActionScript to sync a camera to the playhead of that video clip so that as the audience moves from left to right, the video clip would also do so, creating and simulating the kind of look of a hologram within a box. This was a very intense production and required a lot of precise measurements and getting the cameras in the right spots so that in post we wouldn't have a lot of jittering between frames. In the beginning, we were aiming to get 15 5Ds, but due to budget restrictions, we ended up getting down to 12. The first issue was trying to get all cameras to go off at once. We used a Canon RF remote, but it only worked in a certain direction, so we ended up having to jimmy together a rig that would shoot three remotes at once to trigger the full range of all 12 cameras. It took a little work on set at first, but we eventually got it down and it worked very well. The next problem we ran into was that the Canon 5Ds weren't actually going off at the exact millisecond. So when one camera had a pocket wizard connected to it, the strobes wouldn't go off at the same time for all the cameras. So we ended up having to pull out the strobe lights and go with video lights. This would have seemed like a bit of a compromise, but in the end we were very happy with the result and glad that we ended up getting the shoot done on time. Once the CG background was rendered, we bring it into After Effects and composite it with the 5D Mark II clips that we'd synced up earlier on. Once we were happy with the results, we'd export them from After Effects and then send them off to Danny Davis of Visual Advance in Chicago. Danny is using Flash and ActionScript 3 to take a user's webcam and sync that to the playhead of our footage. The code will basically understand where your placement is from left to right of the frame and attach that to the playhead of our video so that as you move, it simulates the effect that you're actually looking at what appears to be a hologram in the frame. Using the Canon 7D, shooting at 720p, 60 frames a second, we were able to bring that into post, convert it to 24, and get a similar look to the Phantom. It wasn't the same, so we decided to slow it down even more and call upon the plugin Twixter to create smooth transitions from each frame. It was just what we were looking for. If you'd like to come out to the exhibit, it'll be running the entire month of May at the Bait Shop, located at 358 Dufferin Street in Toronto. You can log on to hermanandre.com to find the launch date along with many other events they'll be holding over the course of the month. See you there.